What is up, Lunker League? So today I've been practicing a technique that I've been relatively unfamiliar with. I had used it in the past and been uh, successful, but now I'm trying to hone my skills and that's with a Wacky Rig Senko. In addition to that, I'm gonna have my 500 subscriber giveaway winner announcement in this video so stay tuned and see how it goes wow. all right folks so i'm gonna be going with the b squad setup this is my inside pro advantage rod um with a Sedona. Got an eight pound test on here. It's been extremely windy, so. So, um, I've heard before that when it comes to a uh, braided line, that uh, the wind takes braided line quite a bit. And so, you have a little bit more advantage with a straight fluoro. This is an eight pound. I'm gonna go ahead and try a wacky rig here. Uh, something I haven't tried much, but I definitely want to give a shout a shot to And something I haven't used out here, so trying to give myself a little bit of a different look So I definitely didn't let it sink long enough so Let me throw it right in there Not really what I was looking for. So I know there's fish over in here, that's why I keep trying it like that. So we're gonna go like that. All right, there we go. See him be wrapped around something? It does. Yeah, it does. It does. does I saw the okay yeah all right hold on for a second. all right well I got it back let's hope let's hope it works I don't know if that's a carp or not very well could be, but I'm gonna get up in those roots and see. There we go. Oh, nice, nice. So we're gonna get this one up. This is a nice looking one too. All right, you. Oh. All right. So sticking with the wacky rig worked. I saw that one bust over there. And I went ahead and threw over there just to see what was going on. 
All right. Let's see. We want to see. That's oh, not a bad fish, but probably no need to weigh it. Let me know if you want me to weigh all my fish. Let you know what's going on. It's got a nice little size to it. Hooked right in the roof of the mouth. Let's go ahead and uh, get it back. Right in there, should have been one in there. Always think right in there, should be one. There you go. Good underwater structure right there. Good underwater structure. There we go. Where is he? All right. Oh yeah, this is a nice one too. Ooh. Nice try. Okay. There we go. Nice. Look at that. Now that's a fatty. Look at that. All right. Huh. Let's go ahead and get some, get some photos very quick. Just go ahead and take this out. Alright, this one been caught before. You can tell by how my line is stuck in here. There we go. And quickly. this was not bad so here we go is zero now let's watch the whole process right here unfold and that's a two seven six. Two seven six. All right. Woo! Well, this one hit the ground. Two seven six. I'm gonna go ahead and get it back. All right. Nice. What's up, local league? So I had a good day out there with the wacky rig. Uh, in the beginning, the wind had kicked up. That made it a little bit difficult. In addition to that, I got wrapped up on a nice fish. Uh, the water is clear, so I could see when that fish came up, had good size, and it wrapped me around a tree, a uh, tree branch down there. Um, I was using, I believe, uh, eight pound tests. So I have my drag loose. That's another thing I've been working with, trying to be more finesse. But as I've been finding out, many of these pros, they use 10 and up. And I'm actually thinking about going to a 12. Around here, we fish a lot of grass. We, we fish in areas. Uh, right then, in this video, I'm targeting structure. So underwater roots. And that's where I ended up getting wrapped around. And you can hear my drag going. I wasn't able to kind of just pull that fish out of there. So 
thinking about going to uh, a 12 pound test on that. I know uh, certain pros believe that that changes the nature of that wacky rig. So that's something I'll have to check out. Whereas other pros, um, they use 12 and above and have been successful and won tournaments with the wacky rig. So something I'm looking at, I generally have uh, started fishing much heavier. Last year this time, I was even using the six pound for my drop shot. It was just clearer out there. There was less cover, less weeds, less things to worry about. And it seems like, ah, excuse me. It seems like in just a year's time that it has come overgrown heavy and we have a completely different situation at least coming from the bank if you're on the boat of course you can pull them out of that cover in the open water but generally when you're on the bank you're pulling them through that cover or if you caught them from afar you're pulling them into that cover and up to you so that's where that difficulty lies so Looking at probably going a little bit heavy, probably going to a 12 pound on uh, my leaders. In addition to that, I was using a different setup. I was using my B squad setup. So that's my Pro Advantage rod by Wright McGill. I got that from Walmart for about $50 and really enjoyed that rod as one of my first rods. I have that match with a uh, Sedona uh, Shimano reel which is that's a good budget combo to get you out the door i definitely enjoy my shimano and the size uh more and my enigma rods in terms of sensibility uh sensitivity strength castability um just outright but it's a great setup the reason i had that setup out there is because i ran all fluoro on that setup that rod has micro guides, so I tend to go all floral with that one. And I wanted to see the difference in, in the wind because around here lately, the wind's been kicking up over 10 plus miles an hour, up to 15 miles an hour. And this is a tip I had gotten from Brian Lattimore, a uh, pro fisher, fisherman for uh, FLW. I don't believe he's going to get into Major League uh, Fishing at all, but for the FLW Series and was successful last year uh, in, in winning one of the uh, tournaments, uh, very good fisherman, and he made this point. So it was something I wanted to check, to check out, that in the wind, if you have fluoro, that being just a heavier line all the way around, you, you get less less off of your spool so when you cast out there you're casting out there with braid you'll get a big bow big arc and if that fish hits you're gonna have to reel 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 and boop and you could possibly miss that fish when it comes to uh fluoro it's a little bit what it's weighted a little bit heavier and a little less line comes off it gives you a little bit more control also with david dudley he made an interesting point too with fluoro. When it comes to fluoro, I know everybody says braid is more sensitive, but on slack line, you will see that fluoro can be more sensitive than braid. It transmits more energy. So on that slack line, you'll see that line jump. You'll, you'll see those ripples in the water off of your line and you'll feel that 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 tick just a little bit stronger whereas of course with high high vis braid you're going to see that line move so it's two different methods in, in how it works out excuse me yuck two different methods in how that works out but uh, both interesting try it sometime if you have an extra reel laying around uh, with some fluoro and it gets windy and you normally do a braid to fluoro combination try all fluoro uh, It really did help me out um, Today in that video. I also used a weighted hook just a little bit of weight uh, 1 16th uh, Because with the wind 
it was blowing my it was blowing my uh, Senko off off cue off mark where I was uh, where I was throwing I could see my Senko slide away from the strike zone so I used just a 1 16th to help bring it down and that's really when I started hooking up on fish for the uh, about the first uh, couple casts you saw there where I kept missing Shortly after that, I put on that weighted hook, and that's when I hooked up with that fish that wrapped me around. So, in the wind, slight weight. Don't bump it up a whole lot, because it can completely change the nature of what you're trying to do. Like I said, I went with just a 1 16th. Just enough to combat that wind in combination with that heavier line. And that started producing results to me to where I could drop it right where I needed to drop it. It was still subtle. It was still falling slow and available to those bass. So caught a lot of good fish. I was very surprised, you know. Um, not sure if it was just the day, but all those fish were really nice fish, and including the ones that I didn't get on camera, my GoPro and I not seeing eye to eye recently so I haven't been able to bring you all the great footage of the catches I've had but working on it folks um, hang in there with me the winner of my 500 subscriber giveaway is Dave R D A V space R I need you to contact me. Be best to contact me through a private message on Instagram, Largemouth Lunkin. Get in contact with me so I can get your information and get you all these lures. Once again, Lunker League, I appreciate all your support. I appreciate appreciate you hanging in there with me on my journey to become a bass fisherman. And of course, as I always say, stay tuned for the next one.